barely find my way through all these boxes. What's going on YouTube? Today in this video, we're actually screen printing everything from my left to my right. All these boxes are going to be screen printed, e-press, printed, imprinted, period, today. What's going on YouTube? My name is Bobby Kanak and I am the owner of Aesthetic Imprints, which is a custom apparel printing company based out of my parents' basement. Today in this video, like I said, we're going to be imprinting everything from my left to my right, and it's going to be a fire video. If you want to start a clothing brand, this is the perfect video for you because everything in this is someone starting their own clothing brand. So, to give a little backstory of what's going on today, is we're actually screen printing for one of my viewers, one of my subscribers, one of my supporters reached out to me, wanted to start a clothing brand, and here we are today. So, his name is Santonio. He started a clothing brand called Black Power Fitness. And what he aims to do with this clothing brand is actually open a gym, which is going to be crazy. And you want to know what the crazy thing is? I'm located in Frederick, Maryland. And he's located in Miami, Florida. Man, let me move out there with you. Just let me stop messing. But this is going to be a fire video. He trusted me to get his order done. He watched my YouTube videos and he just liked my work. And he just reached out to me and we just chatted up. And then next thing you know, here we are today placing an order and doing his order all this stuff is gonna be crazy we got hoodies t-shirts joggers leggings oh the leggings are over there they're not even here um we got everything to do today this video is gonna be fire and i highly recommend you all stay tuned and watch this video if you haven't watched any of my videos stay tuned and watch this video because i guarantee you it'll be worth it and on my main goal with this is to motivate each and every one of you to start a clothing brand and just take over the world and as promised, Antonio, I told you I'll record a video for you, make a production video for your items being printed. And here we are from start to finish. So let's get going. All right, ladies and gentlemen, enough of all that chitter chat. One thing I do want to tell you guys before we start beginning, I just got braces in. This sucks. I talk weird. As you, some of you might have noticed, my voice changed. Um, this hurts. I hate it. But what I'm going to start doing now is opening the boxes, getting everything organized, counting it all in and then we'll move from there all right everyone here's a little update of what's going on i finally got all the boxes opened up um this is a majority of the stuff all the hoodies are here he's got the gray he's got midweight and then the heavyweight hoodies at the bottom midweight and then heavyweight at the bottom these are the independent joggers and then sheen he got his leggings and women's joggers from there which i mean they're awesome material here's the women's joggers now, initially, we were going to screen print this, but I feel like now that I'm feeling it, this would be better heat press with polyester vinyl just because of how stretchy that is. Um, I think heat press will last longer on that one. So I'm going to call him up right now and see what's up with that. But other than that, here's how we're looking. We're still waiting on the T-shirts to arrive. But that should arrive tomorrow. All right, I got all the items here, but I'm having some difficulties, which this is not the right time to be having difficulties because there's a tight deadline on this. But the printer is not printing well. The Accurip and Canon Pixma Pro printer, it keeps, it keeps like, as you can see that, you see how it's smearing? I don't know what's going on with that. It's kind of annoying. So... I'm gonna try to fix fix this. I've been trying for multiple sheets, but focus, none of them is working. As you can see, if you look at the S, see how it's smearing right there. The the N. It's hard to see, but it's just those tiny details that. And then, right even on the corner of the sheet, there's this black stuff, black ink. So let me figure this out. All right, y'all. Shit is just not going well right now. This is definitely not the time for shit like this to be happening. But as you can see, I just tried printing again. And this is, it's just getting worse and worse. I mean, the X has all these smears. Let me see if you can even see that. Yeah, this is, this is not the time for stuff like this to be happening. I've been trying for trying. And this ink is just being wasted right now. I don't know what's going on with this printer. It just it's just acting up, smearing the print, not printing sharp. I'm gonna just try to mess with it. Um, let's. This has to go well, cause I gotta meet this deadline for Santonio, bro. I know you're watching this, but I'm gonna try to get this going. Let me know if this has ever happened to you and your Canon Pixma Pro with AccuRip. Let me know down in the comment section or what you did to fix it. I'm gonna try to fix this. 
finally everything is printing clean and sharp now as you can see i mean look at the differences with this look at the s's you see that it looks horrible now it's definitely everything is sharp so always focus on quality everything looks good finally all right let's let's move forward now, the way i fixed this was you go to your accurate settings and what i did was deep cleaning but that wasn't working so then i did a regular cleaning and that solved it solved the problem all right ladies and gentlemen now that that nightmare is over let's move on to actually printing these shirts and getting the process started we're gonna go ahead and get our screen we got I need about four 156 meshes. That's the mesh we're using today. It's not too much detail, but the trademarks do have details. So we're going to get our 156s. And I have five screens exact. And that's exactly what I needed. So let's move on. Now what I'm going to do is tape up all four corners of the design to get it taped onto the screen to expose it. And then get our screen, lay it on here flat. on there now now what you want to do is take it to the exposure unit put the buffer padding for pressure and expose Now what I'm going to do is just rinse the screen with water first. Both sides. See, I'm switching back and forth, just wetting both sides. Just keep doing that until it starts to get weaker as it did. Now I can go in there with closer pressure and knock it all out. And there it is. Now that it's all knocked out, I'm going to go ahead and rinse this side of the screen. This stops the emulsion from dripping down to solve my issues a lot. And there it is. And now the same thing for the rest of the design. For the joggers, it's going on the shin, left and the right. Well, I mean, no, I'm sorry. This is for white ink, this is for black. Sweet. Now, here's the screen for the other joggers, which will go in the pocket for the women's. <laughs>
running back. And there it is. Looking great. Alright, and now this is going to be the most detailed one because it's the neck tags. So just go light on this. All right, y'all, I got three of the screens right here made. I got three slots open on the press. I'm just gonna load it up on there. Get it centered up and taped up and then inked up. Let me bring you guys closer for the taping. Now, you guys wanna make sure you guys tape up the edges of the screen because that's where ink will Expose itself outside and just leak through. Make sure you get all four sides. And make sure you get these walls as well because ink will load up on there and it's going to suck to clean. That's you really want to get it on there. It's going to make your cleaning process easier. And then line it up with the registration marks in the center line. Do the same for all other screens. People like it. They like the transparency now. Oh, okay. But then you want to go ahead and mix your ink. I'm using the white plastic saw ink. We're going to do the white first, and then we'll move on to the gray hoodies. Just load that sucker on there. Load a decent amount, you can always add more. And then, get your Ergo Force Squeezy, always go aluminum. Set of the wood, it always prints better, more force. All right, and since we're printing hoodies, I want to make sure that the board is sticky enough to hold the hoodie. I like to use water-based pallet adhesive, and that's activated through water. Um, in the next clip, you'll see me put it back on as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all the lint off on all of them first, and then apply more glue. Now to explain a little bit, this is the water-based adhesive I use. This is what gets on here to hold the hoodies on here because the hoodies are printed. Hoodies are held onto this board and then in order to print it, you got to have enough tack here or else when you print it, 
the hoodie is gonna lift up with the ink and that won't allow you to do a second print to make it bright and opaque. So what I like to, you can either use this or just spray tag, but with this, you just gotta spray it every time you print a hoodie. With this, you just put it on once on all four boards and then you can just reactivate it with water as you saw me do on the last clip and that'll just reactivate the glue. So with this, you just pour a decent amount that's a lot. You should just spread it out. Spread it all over the board. Evenly. Do the same for all four. All right, now I'm gonna get this test pellon sheet, lay it on here to do, to do a test print. See how this goes. That's clean. I don't see anything wrong. All right, let's do this test on the actual shirt. Just to make sure everything's cool. So we get stretch test it. But on the actual shirt, you gotta do the print flash print. This is when that glue comes in handy because that shirt is supposed to hold down. So let it sit under the flash dryer for like eight seconds, nothing more than 10. You see how ink's getting on my hand? You don't want that. You want it to be you want it to be dry but sticky so that nothing comes on your hand. Just like that, nothing's on my hand. So your second print just float right over that first print. That's clean. All right, ladies and gentlemen, just got the test print done. Everything turned out great. This print looks fire, like always. Um, let's do stretch tests just to make sure everything is good to go. As you can see, it's stretching like there's no tomorrow. So you know what that means, we're good for production, everything will last in the wash, so let's begin production. And just like that, we just finished the black hoodies. Now it's time to move on to the gray hoodies. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now we're gonna go ahead and print the gray ones. 
I got our ink, black ink ready to go. Instead of me having to wash this screen out, this white one out, um, I just decided to make a brand new one just for the black ink, just so I don't have to go wash it out. Sometimes it's just better to do that. Oh, the black is clean. San Antonio, the black is clean. I just posted the um the story of you, and I saw your reaction to that um, story, bro. It touches my heart. Do the second print. Wow. Check this out. Let's go. And there's the black ink version. These look fire. I love black. Black is my favorite color. And the black ink always prints so clean. This is clean. All right, ladies and gentlemen, now that the hoodies are all done, um, I'm going to move on to doing the woman's joggers. Now, he wants a print right on the shin. The only thing that worries me with these is they're very stretchy. So I don't think screen printing these would really be the best option. I don't think it'll last. It'll just stretch and cracks. But he really wants screen printed. So we're definitely going to give screen printing a shot. He told me I could give it a shot. But we're going to give it a try and see how it goes due to conveyor dryer. This is, there is some spandex in here. So it makes it stretchy so we're gonna try to use a poly based ink and see where that takes us now for this one I'm gonna try a top score ink just because of the spandex and stretchy material I just want to stretch your ink so you want to thoroughly mix the ink up get it flowing nicely this ink is thick so if this goes well, yeah, I hate working with this thing. It's so thick, but let's hope it works. Then you want to get your squeezy. Now let's try a test print. Let's try to do it on a regular t-shirt first. See what's going on. See how the printing is going first. Now. This ink is so thick. I don't miss this ink at all. It's so thick. Um, but that's just how white ink is. White ink is just so always thick, always hard to print. That's why I like the FN ink. It's, it's very not as thick. This is like glue. That printed smooth, so let's see how it cures on this regular shirt. That look, that print, see, the thing, this ink is thick, but it prints real smooth, real nice. Whoo, hot. Let's see how this stretches straight out of here. It's still hot as anything. Um, let's see. Oh, wow. See, this ink just never cracks. This is the definition of bulletproof. And I just, like, this thing is still hot. And it's easier to crack when it's still hot, just, like, taking it off the conveyor. And this thing's still going. So I'm pretty confident that this will go well. So we're going to print the left leg right in the center. 
So I'm gonna load it up on from there. Center as I can. My goal is to have this seam right here. Just like that. Make it flat. I don't know, let's see how this goes. sticking too well. Maybe adding more tack. That looks clean. A couple seconds under the flash. Nothing crazy. It is a low cure ink. So Let's see it's already it's already dry. See how this see how this cure is though. Trying this for you, San Antonio. Let's hope it goes well. Wow, I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm impressed. It turned out well. That print looks good. Check this out. And remember, this has a lot of uh, spandex, 5% five per five spandex, I think. Now, let's see how it stretches and does. As you can see, see, it cracks slightly right there. A little bit right there. Maybe I should try heating it up more, letting it sit in there more so that it doesn't crack as much. So let me try throwing it back in there and see what happens. All right, I just slowed down the belt on there and now it does do a lot better. It doesn't crack as much. If you look at the P, it doesn't crack. The W is still there, but everything else does not crack anymore. So I think we're good to go. Um, and again, after this sits for a day, it'll definitely get a little harder um and yeah it looks great so let's move on to production and now the black joggers are done for the women's they actually turned out pretty fire everything is smooth clean everything turned out great now let's move on to printing the gray ones and what i'm gonna do is the reason i put two of the same ones here is so i don't have to do the ink switch out i'm just gonna flip this screen all the way and just add black ink to this side all right ladies and gentlemen now it's time to do the black on the gray sweats all i do is line the seam up all the way up to the edge get this all the way up there and then we got our white ink there but now we're just going to do the black That's clean. That's clean. Flash it. Come back. Do the second coat. And there it is. All right, everybody. Bad news is I had to remake this screen because I was supposed to make... Let me explain it. The This was supposed to be backwards, not this way, so that I could go ahead and print the joggers right way because the joggers would be on here straight on this pallet, but this is backwards, so I need to remake that screen, and I didn't have any more screens. So now, fun part, we got to wash all these screens. Yeah. Well, you guys remember this wonderful carpet? Well, these damn squeegees just decided to fall off. 
I already need a new carpet. This is staying there now. Staying there. Wow. There it is. I washed all the screens are drying. I need a screen rack in there ASAP. What's going on, you guys? Um, I just washed the screens and everything is here drying. As you can see, it's right here behind me. I got I just rewashed every single screen just to have a fresh week still some missing because it's on the press but everything is here it's all drying up unfortunately the t-shirts did not even arrive today which sucks they better arrive tomorrow let's hope they do i'm gonna come back stronger tomorrow remake the screens other than that the women's joggers came out clean the man i mean the black version as well the hoodies are done. So those are out the way. Now we just got to focus on doing the t-shirts, the leggings, and something else. Men's joggers. And then all these other orders. Why is it so blurry? All these other orders. I still have to go drop this off to the client. But yeah, everything's moving smoothly. Well, not as smooth as it could be because there are still mess-ups. But mess ups are gonna happen either way. It's how you get through it. So we're gonna get through this. I'll come back tomorrow. It's like 10 o'clock at night. I'll see you in the next shot. This day can't get any better. It's the next morning. I just came down here. The carpet is soaking wet. And I'm like, what's going on? I come in here, the freaking stuff flooded. Oh my god, I don't even oh. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this day just can't get any better or worse. Fingers crossed it doesn't get worse. I mean, the shirts still haven't arrived. They were supposed to arrive yesterday. That still hasn't come. And now today, the, the freaking thing floods. Now I got to go to Walmart because the shop back I have is just not doing its thing. It's too, it's too weak for that. I just got to go get a new one. So I'm going to go get a new one and try to get this done and over with so I can start printing. What's going on everybody? I came back with the shop back, but I didn't even get to open it because when I came back, my mom had snuck down here while I was gone and did it for me. She's just a goat. I couldn't even get that shop back to work and she got it to work in like a couple seconds. I was literally gone for only 10 minutes. I come back and it's already done. Shout out to my mom. I love her. She's just too kind. She always does this. She always feels bad. She felt bad for me. She knew I had a lot to do and she did it for me. Um, shout out to her. Um, everything went well. I cleaned it up. Only thing that happened was it leaked because it was slightly leaking, but it was just like teardrops coming down. Nothing crazy, and it still overflew just like that. Let me know, if fellow screen printers, if any of you guys had a overflood or something in your uh, washout booth area. Let me know. Um, but I just got the screen made. Machines are warming up. Let's start printing these joggers. All right, everybody, I got the screen right here. I got it all lined up, registered up. What I did was drew the middle line and I have it lined up right in the center. And then I have these two lines to show exactly where it is. I like to print it so that the seam is right on the edge. That causes it to be in the same location every time. And that just makes it a better print. And then you line the seam up all the way to the edge. And I applied more palette adhesive because it is joggers. And you want to also remember to tape up the edges. Get it all taped up. white ink first because I want to print the black joggers first. A tip I'm going to give is start with the hardest prints first. Then in this case, it's the white with the black joggers. Now I'm going to grab a little test shirt just to see if the print is good. Yes. Perfect, flash it, and then we'll do our stretch test, like always. 
That's a clean, sharp, crisp print. Now let's throw this in the conveyor dryer. And just like that, I had to do another one because the first one was cracking. Now I raised the temperature. I mean, I lowered the speed and the stretch is perfect now versus this one. So let's begin production. Now the first one. This is the seam I was talking about. First thing you want to do when you're printing joggers, take the pocket out to have a flat printing surface. I like to take it all the way back. Right there. Actually, let's do a little more because the design starts right here. So, actually, that's a good spot. So, let's take it half an inch before that. Line this seam up so it's straight. Make this flat, flat, flat printing surface. And print. And send it in there for a flash. So you can do the second print. Boom, that is crisp, clean. What I'm gonna do is now let it sit under a flash for a little bit, just to give it a pre-cure and then send it in the conveyor jar, just to make sure it's cured properly for the client because I want it to be, um, I want it to last, I want it to be durable, I don't want it to just crack, I'm out in the wash. Now I'll send it in the flash, I mean the conveyor jar, and we'll be good to go. That's clean. That's fire. Huh, what is wrong with me? So, these look perfect, right? Well, this was supposed to be black ink. I don't know how that slipped my mind. I mean, I knew it, but I guess when I got on that print carpet, everything just flew behind me and I just started printing white ink on the gray ones instead of the black ones, but I did print it white on the black. These came out nice. Um, Santonio, the client, actually called me because I posted it on my story, and he was like, whoa, 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 that was supposed to be black ink. And I was like, oh, shit. But, so, I'm not going to give him this. This is a bad product. I rushed to my computer right away, reordered these joggers. They're going to be here tomorrow, hopefully. I'm going to bang those out with black ink. Um, and, yeah, everything should be good. These are going to come out of my pocket. It's my mistake. Um, and yeah, I think I might be able to salvage these. We'll see what I can do with this. Maybe throw a different design on there. Make my own brand um, for my own brand. I don't know. If nothing goes well, I'll probably just give it to him. Um, and yeah, I finished the joggers. Shirts still haven't arrived. Shit. Now, I'm going to do the leggings in the meantime. That's going to be heat press. So let's go. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now we're going to move on to printing the leggings. I'm going to show you guys a close-up of how I'm gonna print it through the vinyl cutter. We're actually using this special, now you may be wondering why I'm not screen printing it. I just think for leggings, screen printing is gonna crack. It's, for me, I just think it's gonna crack. I think this is just the best approach because I've been printing with this vinyl. This is special like polyester, latex, like it's for leggings and it works really well. I've been using it for my other client for all his leggings and his compression pants and I mean, the print has never cracked. He wears it every day. Nothing happens. So I'm pretty confident about this. I'm more confident about this than screen printing. So we're going to use this vinyl. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it. So let me give you a close-up. Now, I'm going to load it on just like any regular vinyl. Dump that in on that side. Load it. Feed it through. Make sure it's straight. Lock that in. <laughs> See, as you can see, it's not rolling straight. You want to make sure it rolls straight. As you can see, if I keep going, I'm going to get off that wheel. So I'm going to try to center it up. One trick you want to do is use the... I have two rulers here, so I'm going to try to match it up to the same exact number and line. Uh, 22... That's 
good. Let's see. As you can see, that's a lot more straight. So now I'm gonna set it up to cut. Origin, now let's cut it. Now to cut it, I loaded, I lined up everything, how it needs to be cut all on one sheet. Um, and it's all vectorized, so this machine, this computer is strictly for that. So it's gonna send there and cut it. All I do is select it all, go to this button right here, cut, and then cut now. And this is supposed to be like this, where the, it's not supposed to be that big, but the X and that, that's exactly how it's gonna be. So let's send this to cut. And then yes, and then it'll start cutting. Now, once the vinyl is cut, you want to go ahead and weed it out, get your tool, and just take a corner and pull. And you just want to do that and get every little piece out except for the design and the letters. This is a tedious part. Um, stay patient with this part and go slow. Don't rush or else you'll take apart the design. And that's what this is for, to take the small, like this letter P, take that out, and you can see the P now. So that's what that's for. So let me run a little time lapse so you guys don't get bored. So let's do this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got the vinyls right here as you saw from the time lapse. That was a very tedious job because this stuff is tiny, but I got it all cut up and right here ready to go. I got the heat press warmed up. Now with this vinyl, you actually don't cure it at 315 or 330 how I usually do. This one, you want to get it up to 280 degrees Fahrenheit and all you need is eight seconds. That's it. Watch, I'll show you. So you're going to get your leggings let's do this one first we're going to get it on this leg right here is where the words will go so let's get this going let's get you guys closer all right here it is i got the leggings right here this is the left leg now he wanted it three fingers from there right on the seam right in the center so we're going to put it right there slap it on there Make sure it's the right way. Black power fitness. Everything looks right. Just making sure. Now you just eight seconds. Eight, seven, six. It's gonna count down and then it's gonna beep after eight seconds. And then just peel it out. And this looks clean. Let me give you guys a close-up of this. Wow. Actually, let me do the front print real quick first. And then the same thing for the front. We're going to put the X. Get our X. And we're going to put this right on this edge. Same thing, left side. Put it right there. And then same thing, eight seconds. That's all you need for this vinyl. And look at that. Check that out. This is clean. This is why I wanted to do a heat press because look at how smooth that is. It just flows with the leggings. That's fire. What's up everybody? These, check these out. These are clean. These are very clean. I love the vinyl. It's so smooth. It's so, 
It's just perfect. I mean, think about it. You could screen print leggings and all, but it just doesn't. It just. I just feel like it's gonna end up cracking and stuff. I mean, think about it. All gym companies, Gymshark, um, Nike, Adidas, they all heat press leggings. If you think about it, most of the time, the leggings, if there's ladies out there, the leggings you wear are heat pressed. They're not even screen printed. It's just easier that way, and it it's it just feels better. It's smoother. Less of a hassle screen print. This is just my opinion. I just feel like I don't know how to explain it. I just feel like heat press is a better approach. Like I said, I'm just documenting my journey. I'm not here to teach you all. I'm just spreading the message, spreading what I'm doing. So you can take it how you want it. You guys are more than welcome to do it how you like it. But this is just how I did it on these. And it turned out awesome. And the shirts are still not here. Come on, UPS. What is going on? These were supposed to be here yesterday. And they're still not here. So let's hope they come tonight or something. Or even tomorrow latest. So I can get these bad boys printed and shipped out. What's going on everybody? It's the next morning. I had some clients come by. Had a meeting with them and all. All that is done. The shirts actually came through. They're right behind me as you can see. You want to know what the crazy thing is? These shirts came last night 12 a.m. What kind of delivery is that? 12 a.m.? Shout out to my mom because it rained overnight. I was asleep. She came downstairs, took the box in because it rained. Now, if it was still out there, those, those shirts would have been wet. So shout out to my mom, the kindest person I know. Um, anyways, let's start printing these shirts. It's gonna be the same print as the hoodies where we already got the screen for that, the black one. And we got the white one. So let's begin production on these. One more thing, you guys know I can't start production without doing a stretch test, even though I've already printed this. But every time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a tip. Every time you turn the conveyor dryer on or off, redo your test print because this conveyor, conveyor dryers are not accurate. You're not gonna get the same thing. So just make sure you do your stretch test to make sure everything is intact, such as this one. As you can see, stretches perfectly, nothing cracks and it's white ink. Let's begin production. I got all the shirts printed there right here. I just separated everything with sizes because these are getting custom neck tags. So that's all the four XLs. This is all the XLs. This is the mediums, all the colorways. That's the large, extra small, and small. The reason I do this is because I'm gonna go print the neck tags and you don't wanna print the wrong size neck tag in the wrong shirt. shirt. All right, hustlers, I'm gonna start calling y'all hustlers because we all need to be hustlers and grinders. Anyways, I got the shirts right there all stacked up and it's sizes from extra small all the way to 4XL. Um, got our neck tag screen, got our neck tag palette. Let's start printing these. So let me give you a close up. Don't be shy, get closer so you can see this. All right, now I got two lines here. This is the line where the design starts. This is where I want to bring the scene. So, what I'm going to do is grab the extra small shirts, go on here, match the seam up to that line, see this tag, tear it off, you want to lightly tear it off so you don't rip the seams, flood it, and print, and look at that, that's clean, check this out. 
Come on, guys. Brand your apparel. Take it to the next level. And just like that, all of the items are done. T-shirts turn out fire with the neck tags. Branding is key, and that looks professional. The black joggers, women's joggers, hoodies, leggings, and the gray joggers. Still waiting on the replacement gray to arrive, but let's get this packed up. You guys want to see the behind the scenes of everything this is our little photo setup look at these shirts this looks insane all right ladies and gentlemen as you saw from the last clip i showed you guys behind the scenes and the white backdrop i do offer free pictures like that on the white backdrop from my clients i don't really advertise that or anything i just provide it when they place an order with me however Here's how everything looks. Everything looks clean. Everything is finally done. Um, what I am waiting for is the joggers that I accidentally printed the white on. Those are supposed to come today. So let's hope they come. But I don't want to waste any more time not shipping this stuff out. So I'm going to at least ship all of this out and then ship the joggers out whenever they come, whenever I can get them done. So I'm going to start boxing everything up here and I'll see you in the next shot. Table is empty. Got four boxes. These are the gray hoodies, black hoodies, leggings, and women's joggers, and all the t shirts in there. We got four pretty heavy boxes. These joggers, um, I'm going to ship these out when the gray ones come in, so I could just ship both of these together. So I'm going to pack these up and go ship these out for now. One simple tip I'm going to give you guys if you're shipping stuff out is put a padded box right on top because when the customer goes to open this they're going to take their knife and just slam right in there if you don't have a padded thing in here these shirts whatever's in here is going to rip from their knife so make sure you put a padder this is heat what's going on everybody as you saw from this video everything turned out fire this was a very, this was a lot of items that he placed with us. It was hoodies, it was t-shirts, it was joggers, it was women's joggers, it was leggings, it was a lot of things. But I'm glad we got it done and I met his deadline. He needed it by June 12th because he had a vendor opportunity, he had a pop-up shop. So I'm glad I got it to him by then, I got it earlier. So he has enough time to do whatever he has to do to get prepared for that place. And shout out to you, San Antonio, for reaching out to me and showing me love and placing your order with me. I'm glad you reached me out. And he found me from YouTube all the way from Miami, Florida. And I'm in Maryland. So that's just crazy. When I first got this, when I first got the call from him, I was like, he found me from YouTube? That's crazy. I didn't even know there was power within you all. Um, thank you for reaching out to me and trusting me. We always talked for hours, chatted it up. And now it actually happened. We worked, bro. And I'm glad we can make it work and ship it out to you. Everything was fire, bro. It was a pleasure working with you. These shirts were fire. Everything is clean. Shout out to him. He's starting this clothing brand because he has a one hell of a story. You guys should definitely check him out. I'm leaving his Instagram, everything down in the description. Make sure you check it out. Um, he started this clothing brand because he wants to open up a gym. So please help his dreams come true. I'm going to give you guys a promo code and it's called Aesthetic 
first word of my YouTube channel down in the description and go place it in his website and he'll give you a discount off these items that I printed for him today. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe right here. Check out these videos and show him some love. Show us some love. Like these videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Oh, one more thing. No grind, no glory. So put in that work. Remember that.